What's up, everybody? This is Ed from I Bring Back. We are going to continue our whirlwind tour of classes here in Python, fueled by equal parts ignorance and enthusiasm. So today, we're going to examine the way in which we look at classes, or rather, how classes represent themselves to us. So, without further ado, let's take a look. Alrighty, so to get started here, I have a very small script with just a class in it. Let's take a look at my class. It's called DuckLord, and when it initializes, it assigns two attributes that we're going to give it as arguments when we instantiate the class. That would be self.ducks and self.mood. So let's uh, just pretend together a DuckLord is a certain type of person that has uh, with himself or herself at any given time a number of ducks and is also, in general, in some sort of mood. So let's go ahead and run this thing. And we'll slap it over on the right side of my screen, and we'll make a duck lord called Chad. Let's say that Chad has six ducks and is in an amiable mood. Pretty simple, right? So if we go to look at Chad, what do we get? We, we just want to be told what Chad is. Uh, we get something back that says main that duck lord instance, and, and you've seen this before. But it's not all that terribly informative. And what's happening there when we just pass Chad into the, the command line there is it's calling... Uh, the, uh, the representation of Chad, the R-E-P-R, which is another one of the magic words. And for our classes, in general, we ought to redefine that so that it's more informative. So we're going to show you how to do that. Okay, so now we've added this R-E-P-R method of the class, and this is going to be called implicitly when you just pass the name of your instance uh, to the, the command shell there. So it's not very complicated. It's just the, the only thing this method does is return a string to us. And that string says duck lord with. And then we add the number of ducks in there, of course, to a string format. And it says how many ducks he has. And he's in a mood of one sort or another. So let's save it and run it. And let's look again. And let's say Chad equals duck lord with six ducks, and this time Chad can be in a cranky mood. And now if we look at Chad, well, there you go. Duck Lord with six ducks and a cranky mood. All right, so why are we doing this? Why are we taking the time to define this method of each class we make? Because we're going to try to do that from here on out. And the answer is debugging more than anything. If you're going back through a module or a script or program of one sort or another that you've written and you want to understand, Oh, where it's at or what the state of it is or what your particular instance of a class is up to or what's in there, consider the difference between these two things. So this tells us everything about that Duck Lord chat. Every, every attribute he has is listed in a descriptive way, right? So it, it helps us remember what we're trying to represent with this class, right? It doesn't just say n ducks equals six and mood equals cranky. It just sort of explains the ducks are with Chad and how he feels. And compare that down here to this, which is sort of the default implementation there. You can see that it's uh, it's much less informative. We don't know how many ducks Chad has. We don't know if he's in a mood. We don't even know that he has a number of ducks in a mood. So this is why we put this in, is if we're going through looking for problems, we're able to call it up quickly. And that should be a pretty evident benefit for including this method in every class you create. So again, this is Ed for my Bring Back. Appreciate you spending the time to watch here. We will continue to take baby steps with object-oriented Python and classes until we're ready to get up and gallop together. So please keep coming back, keep pushing play, and share this with people in your life.